Right, next we're going to do question 5 of the same paper, 2018. Question 5 says the reaction of zinc and excess dilute hydrochloric acid um, is used to investigate factors that affect the reaction rate. The balanced equation is as it's given there, zinc in solid phase plus 2HCl aqueous solution gives us zinc chloride in aqueous solution plus hydrogen gas H2. The reaction conditions reaction conditions used and the results obtained for each experiment are summarized in the table that is below. The same mass of zinc is used in all the experiments. The zinc complete is completely covered in all reactions. The reaction time is the time it takes the reaction to be completed. You have experiment 1 to 5, the um, concentration of hydrochloric acid in the mole per decimeter cube, volume of hydrochloric acid, the state of division of zinc, powder, granules, powder, granules and powder, temperature of HCl and reaction time as well. 5.1. Experiment 1 and 5 are compared. Write down the independent variable for 1 and 5. Okay. Now the independent variable of course is the variable which is obviously not dependent on anything else. Okay. So if you look at experiment 1, we check it out, we see okay the concentrations are the same for 1 and 5. The volume of HCl also is also the same for 1 and 5. The state of zinc is the same for 1 and 5, both powder. The temperature okay, of HCl for number 1 is 25 degrees Celsius, but for number 5 is 35 degrees Celsius. And we have reaction time to be uh, 7 minutes in the first one and 4 minutes in the second one. So the independent variable for me, if I must have a look at this question, I'm going to say temperature surely should be independent of the reaction. In other words, 5.1, what I'm saying is by writing down temperature, okay, is that temperature is definitely independent of the reaction itself. Okay, it doesn't matter the temperature necessarily, but we can clearly see that time is not the independent variable here because the the time clearly is dependent on the temperature. Here we have a lower temperature here, and reaction time was a bit. Hmm. Well, for one and five, we can see that the reaction uh, time was seven minutes, but for a higher temperature, it was four minutes. Okay, so time surely looks like time, the reaction time is dependent on something over here. So temperature is my independent variable. 5.2 says define reaction rate. Okay, define reaction rate number two. Oh, I don't know why I'm looking at number two to be honest. I think 5.2 and I just looked at experiment 2 for no reason, sorry. So define reaction rate, we're just going to go and define that. Um, there's more than one way we can define it, okay? Um, but for me, it's just the easiest way to remember it is by the formula that the rate of change in concentration, all right, is about this is the easiest way to, re to remember that or the rate of change in number of moles. But if you want to be a little bit more... Um, vocal in your definition, you can say that it's the change in the uh, amount of moles of products or reactants per unit time. It's basically straight from the formula or use the first one which is it's the change in concentration of products um, and re uh, divided by reactants per unit time. It's the change in concentration of products and reaction um, divided by the change of product, the change in concentration of reactants per unit time. It's basically straight from the formula. That's reaction rate. Pretty basic, straight definition. Then we have 5.3 says write down the value of x in experiment, 14, uh, experiment 4. Um, having a look at experiment 4, we have the concentration of HCl to be 1.5 and we have the volume of HCl to be 400 cubic centimeters 
the temperature is at 25 degree, uh, 25 degrees Celsius and we did need to determine X so we can see from ex um, experiment 4 the, the volume yeah. change the volume increase yeah the volume the, the volume changed of so the, if the volume increased then didn't the pressure decrease the v even if that happened you can see that from experiment so that's not that. well you can just see from experiment 2 to experiment 4 okay that there's no change in concentration even if the volume increased the concentration still gives us the same value right the concentration still gives us the same I mean there's still yeah. the same value for concentration for both experiments um, no matter the fact that we increase the volume of hydrochloric acid we still get the same concentration at the same temperature so temperature is independent so temperature is kept constant yeah. there's also no change so there shouldn't be any change in the reaction time either so five Oh, sorry, what question was that? 5.3 okay. uh, okay. what, what was the definition of reaction rate? Because, yeah. 14 minutes, so the reaction, the definition of reaction rate was um, If you just have a look at the memo here It's the change in concentration of products or reactants per unit time Okay, so there's no, there's no change in the concentration from okay. experiment 2 to 4 So it should be the same time Oh, which it does confirm my prediction there. 14 minutes. Uh, 5.4. I'm trying to move along swiftly here. 5.4. The Maxwell Boltzmann energy distribution curves for particles in each of the experiments. Um, so they draw for experiments 1, 2, and 3. And for 5.4.1, identify the graph A, B, or C that represents. For 5.4.1 experiment 3 and let's give a reason for our answer okay so let's have a look here we can clearly see that a and b have about the same kinetic energy value whereas c has more kinetic energy compared to the number of molecules so it definitely looked like c underwent some type of catalytic there was a catalyst involved there it looks like it let's just check so for experiment three we have the concentration is five mole per decimeter cubed volume is 200 cubic centimeters it's powder temperature reaction time was five minutes so that's fairly quick and so I don't know let's have a look let's hear from the people with experiment three I'm gonna say experiment three happened a lot quicker than most of than most of the other um, reactions or experiments here so I think probably it's I'm gonna go with C so when it comes to answering 5.4.1 we have number of molecules versus um, kinetic energy and then we also have activation energy there in the graph which is EA yeah. okay so if you look at experiment uh, 3 you see it, the concentration was 5 sorry it's blocked now let me just move it concentration was 5 temperature of um, 25 degrees Celsius and had a reaction time of 5 minutes okay but the concentration is obviously quite high okay so Think about it like this, you have your concentration formula, C is equal to N over V. Okay, now we have the number of molecules versus the number of, versus the kinetic energy. So if I want the number of moles, okay, of course, of course, okay, N is going to equal uh, C times V, okay, C times V. So higher concentration times the volume should give me the number of moles okay so obviously for a concentration of five it doesn't look like graph c would would, would fit that description because the concentration is quite high so i'm kind of going to have quite a high amount of moles there so i i th i therefore revoke my first answer of c and change my answer to uh, b because the higher the amount of moles i have the less the, con the kinetic energy should be so for my reason i'm choosing graph b 
which makes sense okay and the good reason would be that experiment three has the highest acid concentration so it has the highest concentration meaning there's more particles or there's a higher number of moles which explains this little formula that i have over here so for 5.4.1 i'm choosing graph b and then for 5.4.2 for 5.4.2 experiment 5 determine which is the graph well experiment 5 as i mentioned is the only graph that has or experiment where they raise the temperature in the other four they kept the temperature the same and they changed other stuff but for experiment 5 they concentration was 2 volume was 200 cubic centimeters kept the state of powder and they raised the temperature to 35 degrees celsius which gave us a reaction time of four minutes now according to theory if you increase the reaction if you increase the temperature you increase the amount of kinetic energy which means that experiment five must be graph c okay and graph c and a good reason would be that increased temperature I'm obviously shorthand writing this should equal an increase in the kinetic energy okay and that we have learned in more than one um, section of chemistry before in grade 11 and 12 okay so that's a pretty good reason as we can see the kinetic energy does not end at the same point as graph B and A or A and B but it increased it um, ends further along meaning that as further we go along the x-axis obviously we're increasing in value so definitely graph c must represent experiment five so 5.6 this is a worthy question um of having a look at they want us to calculate the rate of reaction with respect to zinc for experiment two okay let's just have a look at 5.6 quickly okay we got reaction rate we know that um, we can either use the change in the number of moles divided by the change in time but they've given us the mass of zinc to equal 1.5 grams and um, So we need to find the number of moles of zinc quickly so what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look here at the mole formula we have 1.5 divided by um so 1.5 grams divided by 65 grams per mole um should give us divided by 65 should give us a value of 0 0.0239 Okay, so we're just going to substitute that in 0, 0.023 mole divided by 14. And we should get an answer of 1.65 times 10 to the power of negative 3 mole per minute to the negative 1. Right, that should be our final answer for 5.6.